Now we shall prove that the OLS estimator is unbiased. Before to do that, we need the for assumption that that uh, our model is linear. So uh, so why it is equal to x beta plus e. The second assumption is that we have random sampling. The third assumption is that there is no perfect collinearity. So we are assuming that the rank of x is equal to k. And then the fourth assumption, it is that the expected value of the residual given all the regressors is equal to zero. So we are assuming strict strict exogeneity. Now we compute the expected value of the of the our estimator. First of all we have to rearrange our estimate of beta that is equal to x transpose the x inverse times x transpose y. We substitute y then we have x transpose the x inverse then x transpose that multiplies x beta plus e. Then we are left with beta plus x transpose x inverse times x transpose e. Now we want to take the expected value of beta hat that using the law of iterated expectation will be equal to the expected value of the expected value of beta at given x. Now, all this is equal to e, the expected value of beta, plus x transposed x inverse x transposed that multiplies e all this given x So, I beg your pardon, we have to take the expectation of this, that is equal to this. Now, uh, we notice that conditional on x, the error term is just the only stochastic, stochastic component. So the other stuff are constant. So we take the expectation of beta plus x transpose x inverse times x transpose the expected value of e given x. We know since we are, uh, are assuming a strict exogeneity, this is equal to zero. So we are left with the expected value of beta that will be just beta. Then we have proven the fact that the OLS estimate are the OLS estimate is unbiased. Then we shall prove it is consistent. So we take the probability limit. So we take the probability limit of beta hat that is equal to beta plus the probability limit of x transpose x inverse times the probability limit of x transpose e. Now, we can rely on the law of large numbers. So we are just multiply and dividing, multiplying and dividing by, in, by n. So we take the probability of x transpose x divided n inverse times the probability limit of x transpose e divided by n 
Now we have to compute these two elements. So the probability limit of x transposed x divided by n, we are assuming that is just equal to q, that is a positive definite matrix. For this reason, we are left with the probability limit of beta hat that is equal to beta plus q inverse that is multiplying the probability limit of x transposed e divided by n. Now we have to take this probability limit. So the probability limit of x transposed e divided by n will be just 1 divided by n that multiplies the sum from e that is 1 to n of xi ei. So <clears throat> this stuff is just equal to the expected value of x time e. x time e, the expected value of x time e using the law of iterated, iterated expectation will be just the expected value of the expected value of x times e given x and then will be the expected value of x times the expected value of e given x and by assumption this is equal to zero so this is equal to zero so the probability limit will be just the probability limit of beta is equal to beta plus q inverse that multiplies zero <clears throat> For this reason, we have that the probability limit of beta is equal to beta. And then we are alright. This is consistent. <laughs>